Okay, well, good morning, everyone. Um, welcome again. Um, I'm very excited to announce that we have a very special guest speaker today joining us. Um, Amy Olson is a good friend of mine, and she is a lecturer at UNCW. That's correct, Amy? Yep. Yeah, how long have you been at UNCW? Four or five years. Four or five years. So you're in the School of um, Health and Applied Human Sciences, is that right? Correct, yes. 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 Um, and then before that, you got a, you have a bachelor's degree. And a master's and in a exercise master's science. Well, right. In exercise science. In exercise science. So, um, and you've coached also a variety of sports? Yes, I... Um, Originally, for 17 years, I coached cross country and track and field at the college level. Yes. Um, and now I'm full time lecturer rather than coach, uh, but I still go by coach. So you can call me Coach Amy if you want. Uh, I coach there a few individuals now, but not any teams. And um, I've definitely shifted more towards um, wellness rather than competition. Yes. And um, also, you you re recently ran the New York marathon. Yes. I don't know if you're going to talk about that today, but that, that's a <laughs> phenomenal a, a achievement. Yes. Thank you. Yes. And then if I could just read a quote, uh, looking at your bio here and oh. <laughs> so your goal is to reach all students in understanding and improving their whole person wellness. Wellness across the lifespan is really my passion. That's you saying this. Yes. And as my coaching career evolved from division one athletics to division three athletics, where the stu student focus was more on life experience than competition, I became more entrenched in how I could make a difference in the lives and well being of athletes than chasing the next championship. Yes, mm. I like that a lot. That's a really neat, and that can be applied to anything that we do in, in life. Yes. yes. Very true. Yes. Very true. So uh, with that, I want everyone to unmute their microphones and give a big round of applause to, <laughs> to Coach Amy. Yay. Okay, so I'm going to share, I'm going to make you the host, Amy. And you are you are in control. Uh oh, <laughs> can you deliver Ian real quick? <laughs> if I have any trouble. <laughs> yeah, actually, you know what we could do here. If you'll make me the host again, I can control this from this end. Hmm. Okay. How do I make you the host? Uh, go over the picture of me, and then hmm. um, there should be three, three dots. little dots in a in a blue square. Hey, host. Oh, okay. Cool. Yep. Great. All right, so I'm going to. You're muted, Rob. Oh, I'm just saying you're there good go. to go. Ah, okay, awesome. Uh, well, what I hope to do today is to expand everyone's understanding of wellness. Um, and so I definitely want some participation. So you will be unmuting yourself because I want to hear from you all um, and not just give you a lecture because I'm all about physical activity. So um, I don't like to just stand and talk and while everybody else is sitting and listening. So um, I do want some participation today. All right. So um, Rob, do you have the PowerPoint or do you want me to put that up? You're on mute. Yes, I'll, I'll bring that up now. Oh, okay, sure. Um, and if it's easier to make me the host and me run that, that's fine too, whatever. Yeah, I can share the screen and then give you control of my computer. That's what wow, I'll do. Wow, isn't that crazy? <laughs> it, is, it is crazy. Technology is a, a great thing. Yeah. Online. 
So just to get started, guys, um, I would love to hear, and this is kind of a brainstorming, but I'd love to hear what you know right now about wellness. Like, what do you think of if you hear the word wellness? Because it's kind of become a buzzword in the past few years, and I see it everywhere from names of businesses to uh, things online, and some are accurate representations of wellness and some aren't. So I'd love to know what you all have observed and what you know of wellness right now. Anyone, and feel free to call on people, Amy. <laughs> I didn't think of that, okay. <laughs> Start you with guys Itzel. Can jump in. Itzel okay. will be the first. All right, go for it, Itzel. What do you know about wellness? What do you think of it right now? Um, well, I agree that it's kind of... Did it cut out? Yeah, I didn't hear. Oh, okay. So, uh, maybe Adeline, you can have a go at this one. Um... I don't know. I sort of think of it as being sort of like a healthier, healthy person and not being sick, sort of. Yeah, I also think about the mental side of things. Like, mm -hmm. I remember my, my coaches back in Australia would say, a fitter body is a fitter mind. Mm, very true. Yes. Who else? Uh, wellness, like physical health, like. Mm -hmm. How about Cynthia? Cynthia and Cyrus, so just pop in here and and, and see um, if you have. Guys, exercise is physical health. Mm -hmm. That's an example of physical wellness for sure. Becoming aware. Ooh, that's true. Yes, very good. I'm glad you used that word. We're going to talk about that. Awareness. Cynthia, David? By the way, there's no wrong answer. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Don't feel any pressure. Whatever, whatever you think is wellness, we can probably fit this into the discussion. So it's a really big, broad term. So there's a lot that goes into wellness. Um, most people, and even my college Hello? students. Oh. Yeah, go ahead. What do you want to say? Oh, well, like physical fitness or something, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, that's an example of wellness. Okay, yeah. All right. I didn't know if my, I didn't know if my mic was working. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I was just trying to tell. Very good. So, Amy, I think that you should have control of my screen. Okay. Let me see here. <laughs> How do I go to the next slide? Um, press the space. Oh, yeah. there we go. I found it. All right. How good such is a busy this? Slide. All right. So, I left this one blank um, because I wanted to hear from you all. So, um, so far, we have a lot of people talking about physical wellness and exercise and the way your body might look. Um, and Dr. Rob mentioned mental wellness, seeing a fitter body is a fitter mind. Very true. Anybody else want to add anything? Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to click to the next slide then. Um, this is the definition of wellness that we use at UNCW. And so you'll see it's uh, kind of involves here. Wellness is a journey. So this is one, oops. Oops, sorry. Go back. All right. Uh, it is a journey. So it's not just where you are right now. Like if you want to think of it as an on and off switch, like it's not we're wellness, we're well, or we're not. It's more of a journey. It's a process. So wherever you are now is totally fine. And that's why I have these arrows here because it's a continuum. 
And wellness has many dimensions, which I think you're going to learn today, hopefully, and includes all aspects of life. Um, it's not just a state of being at one point in time, but how you're traveling and which direction you're going. And it's about, you know, combining joy and full living and mind, body, spirit. So um, my college students as well, uh, the first thing that pops up when people think of wellness, because I believe it's the term most often used uh, in society, is talking about physical fitness in terms of wellness. Uh, but you're going to learn today. It's so much more than just, that's just one aspect of wellness. So if we just broke it down into like this simple def definition of mind, body, and spirit. So if we only looked at wellness in terms of our body, um, we might get a great measurement at the doctor's office when they measure our height and our weight and our blood pressure and our temperature. And they might say, oh, you're, well, you're well based on this information. But it's all physical information, right? And it's what we can see. But somebody could be short, they could be round, they could um, be underweight, and they could still have a lot of wellness because it's so much more than just physical point of being. So um, hopefully I will expand your um, opinion and understanding of wellness throughout this, uh, our time together. But oh, I want to sh Sorry, I, David and Cynthia said hygiene. Oh, yes, that's a good one. Yes, for sure. And especially we're really it's learning a out. lot about that right now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, good, good. All right. So um, when we look at like this little the arrow here and the wellness, looking at it as a continuum, you have a choice in where you are. Um, if you are, you know, sort of towards the unhealthy range, like maybe you don't take good care of yourself or you could be sick right now. Or what if you have an illness or you happen to be in a wheelchair? That doesn't mean that you're not well. It just means you might be a different point on this continuum, but you can always, and what we want to do is be pointing that direction towards better wellness. So some things you have control over, because there's many things we don't, um, are your outlook, in your attitude, in your decisions that you make. These are all things that affect um, your wellness and which direction you're moving in this journey of wellness. All right, so um, as I talked about, like if you go to the doctor's office and you get your annual physical or checkup, they call it oftentimes a well visit, um, they're just looking at this, this very tip of the iceberg. So it's just what they can see and some measurements they take. And that's going to talk about just your state of health is what they can see. But if you know what an iceberg looks like, it's much bigger under the water. So what we see in the little measurement we get right here doesn't really explain all that's going on down here. And what I want to do today is talk a lot more about this stuff because I believe that makes the difference. All right, and that you can work on what's under the water, um, but what we can't see is gonna make a bigger difference in your life and the joy you might experience. Actually, right. um, can I jump in here? Just Absolutely. Here's a question, it's a science question. So you mentioned the iceberg. It's just a very interesting concept. So a certain portion of the iceberg is above the water and a large, larger component is below the water. What is the scientific term to describe how much is above and below the water? Does anyone know? And it's also got to do with how much of Earth's crust is floating on magma as well. Anyone? It's called no. isostasy. Ooh, I think I think you need to write that one out. Uh, <laughs> I need to see that. I'm going to write, write, write this one out. <laughs> so I can actually go annotate and then I can go text and then mm. I stos. Oh boy, had I. Dr. Rob. Stostasy. Is that right? Is that right? Now Dr. I don't know Rob. how to spell it. I stostasy. Yes. That's a tough word. I. Now my notebook, I just wrote everybody's name that's here so I can keep more better track of it. Okay, great, awesome. Just as a note for what I say today, so. Great. If anyone else wants to do that, it's just an idea. 
Very good. Uh, thank you, um, Adeline. Maybe um, you could keep record of that. That would be great. Um, Amy, I'm going to... Now I've mucked everything up. No, nah, it's okay. So explain what that is a scientific term, isostole? Isostasy. Isostasy. It's got to so, be a Latin word, right? <laughs> yes, I think so. Iso, same. Um, and stasy would be the, like the status. Mm -hmm. So think of this like it where the iceberg sits in the water, it's in balance with the environment around it. It's actually an interesting concept because if you're talking about your health and wellness, it's, mm. it's, it's all about this continuum and going back and forth. Like when we plonk an ice cube into a glass of water, it sort of bobs mm -hmm. up and down until it reaches a, a static state, right? Floating mm -hmm. a certain amount above and below the line. Right. Mm -hmm. So what you're describing there is the isostasy of, of well-being. It's very, very, Ooh. yes. Cool. Love it. Good. Awesome. All right. Did anybody have questions over this iceberg model of health? Do you understand it? Um, so like, as in like, so once you get the top part of the iceberg, like some kind of like wellness checkup, then would they move down if depending how ever they measure, like would they mm -hmm. go down or up mm -hmm. on the iceberg basically? That's a great question, Adeline. Um, so in general, the doctor is really looking at what they see and what they can test. They might ask you a couple questions like how you're feeling in terms of if you're, you know, they might be concerned about your um, happiness. So they might ask you a few of those questions, but really these other things are up to you personally. Um, and we don't, we can't necessarily measure these. So the doctor's not going to do that. That's going to be up to you to work on these things uh, on your own. And uh, we're going to show you some, some different ways you can do that. And Dr. Rob might have some activities you can do on your own to keep improving these, which, you know, as we're improving things that are under the water, you're also, your state of health and what's visible will also improve. Like if you're feeling really sad, right? So that could be like a psychological state. So that's kind of that middle of the underwater. Um, if you're feeling really sad or down or something like that, it's also gonna show up with your state of health because the measurement that the doctor takes um, maybe one, you just look sad, so they might recognize that right off the bat, but what if that also changes your um, blood pressure or your eating habits? So there will be visible signs into what's going on underneath, um, but it takes a, a closer look at that. So we want to just kind of focus on things that we have control of doing and what we can improve individually to Im improve like what's underneath the water so that the iceberg, the top that we see is even better too. All right, so I wanted to show you, uh, let's see, Rob, oh, there we go. All right, some just uh, visual representations of wellness. I was just um, Googling different images. I know what I prefer, but I just wanted to show you there's quite a variety of um, different ways people are breaking up mind, body, and spirit. So we have examples of a six dimension wheel, an eight dimension, um, the next slide showing this feather representation, which came from Florida State, which um, they're the Seminoles, so they probably selected the feather to represent, um, that's the next slide, uh, just what um, their version of interpreting the different dimensions of wellness. So, and then here's another one that just was a little bit different, but they're basically all representing mind, body, and spirit, and it's just how we break it down. This is the one I like to use, um, and it is the sort of most expanded version of wellness that I've ever um, encountered. So this is what we use to teach at UNCW when we talk to our students about wellness. And, um, and you can see there's 12 different dimensions. So it really breaks down mind, body, and spirit pretty detailed way. So we could go through 
that wheel today and just talk about the different aspects of wellness. Um, so if you're looking at that right now, the first one, and this is what I take my students through first, is um, self-responsibility and love. All right, does anybody wanna tell me what you think of that? Like what, what would that represent? Self-responsibility and love. I you mean, can type an answer. Sometimes it changes like what you do and how you feel as like someone you love's gone or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sometimes that can change how you feel or how you act or something like that. Yes, very true. How about self-love? Do you guys think that's important to love yourself? I'll ask. Sort I'll ask, of. Let's ask Joe. Joe, what do you think? Cyrus said yes. yes. Yes, it is. We could do a thumbs up here if you think it's important. Self-love. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Also, can we print this out to do look at it at home and maybe hang it up or something? It's really interesting. Oh, the wellness wheel. Yeah, we can. I can send you some links um, or send them to Dr. Rob so you can see it. It's beautiful, isn't it? It is. Yeah, really I, I will actually, I'm going to put all of these recordings and these presentations on our website. So I'll make sure that I make a, like a PDF of this, this diagram so that you can print it out mm -hmm. and put it up on the wall. That's a great idea. Very good. Very good. All right. So, um, all right. So self-responsibility and love, we start with that one because it is super important. Like, uh, it's, kind of our, our fundamental piece is that we love ourselves. therefore we're going to take care of ourself. Um, if we love ourselves, we're going to take better care of others because we, we care. We love them. We love ourselves. Um, if you um, have ever ridden an airplane and they talk about the oxygen mask, if it drops down, you put it on yourself first before you put it on someone else. Because if you're taking care of yourself, you're going to have more energy and ability to take care of other people. So ultimately we do want to help and love others, but we kind of have to start with ourselves, taking good care of ourselves to be able to do that. Um, so it's not really selfish. It's important that we love ourselves and we respect ourselves. And then uh, self-responsibility means you're taking responsibility for what happens to you. So um, if you, something goes wrong, like if you got a bad grade on a test, that's not the teacher's fault. That's not because the test was unfair um maybe you could have studied more or maybe you could have had a better night's sleep the night before like taking responsibility for your um end of the bargain is really important process with that all right so um i we always start with that one just because it's pretty important and the other thing with this uh wellness wheel is that showing that everything ties in together so we'll talk about that today too um all right, Rob, can you switch to the next slide or I don't know why that arrow is not working for me. Oh, there we go. All right. All right. So um, breathing, of course, I'm just going to run through these um, pretty quickly so you can kind of get a sense of them. All right. So breathing is something um, who early, I remember one of you mentioned awareness. Um, I can't remember who that was. If you want to give a wave. Who said it? It was Angie. Angie, okay. All right, so awareness uh, is really important for breathing because we're all breathing right now, right? But how many people are actually thinking about their breathing? How many even recognize when they get angry, they probably hold their breath? Or um, they might breathe faster, right? A lot of times we're not even aware of how uh, we're breathing. But it's super important because it's our life. Like we need breath, we need oxygen. And as you improve your awareness of breathing, you'll um, start to become really uh, noticing how important it is and how you can use it as a tool to change your state of health, all right? Sensing is, um, you probably know all about senses. Yesterday, or yesterday, if you did the cooking, you got to eat and taste. And it looks like Zeta's eating an apple right now. So you're, um, <laughs> you're getting to sense the taste and you're also probably hearing some crunch. So you're getting some sound with that. Um, if we're outside in nature, that is the 
best place for sensing because all of our senses are active. If you go to the beach, you're feeling the sand on your feet, you're hearing the ocean waves, you might taste a little bit of the salt from the water. Uh, that is such a great experience of sensing. And really I never actually, important. I like never really thought about that. Yeah. Well, hopefully this will improve your awareness, like Angie said, and you can become more aware of, and it's really important for your health. And we don't even notice it a lot of times. And plus our, our world is so loud. Like there's so many noises going on. We kind of become numb to sound. And um, what if sometimes you just take a minute to listen to the birds? Like I can hear them outside my window right now. But if I didn't pay attention, I wouldn't even notice them. That's, that's so true. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's so true. And also the, the senses are different. Um, the strengths of each of our senses, I would think are different for different people. Mm. But, but also the environmental cues that different animals use are, are different as well, right? Yes. Like, like let's take a bee. A, a bee, you know, they have gregarious behavior. They're, they're working as, as one big unit. And a lot of their senses in the environment are like UV, right? Whereas we, we, can't, we can't do anything with, with UV. We don't see it or anything like that. Mm -hmm. right yes right what about some animals that live in the dark they don't they can't rely on vision right look at a bat for instance it's using sound a lot mm -hmm. um yeah interesting mm -hmm. yeah we, we have like a lot of examples. we have a really big backyard with a big wood so it's like we're outside a lot, but I'm, and I do hear a lot of birds and you can hear a lot of things, but I've never actually thought about it that way. Mm. Well, um, good. Yeah. So just mm -hmm. want to add that. Yeah. Thank you. So it's very there's an ecological term for this, actually a German word. It's umwelt. U M W E L T. And Stephen J Gould, um, sort of stole this from the German language, but it's, it's how um, a being perceives the, the world around it, ar around us, right? So as I said, a bee looks at the world differently than a bat, than a human, but, but even within like human beings, it could be an age factor, or it could be that the environment that they grew up in, or the trauma that, that you've been through, right? So, mm -hmm. um, this term umwelt, I always sort of think about this, like perceiving the world through the eyes of the, the thing that you're looking at. Ooh, I love that. I'm learning some new words today. I love this. <laughs> I wish I knew how to spell isostasy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to look it up later. <laughs> I'm going to find out. I'll, I'll find out for everyone. <laughs> All right, so um, moving along, eating. Of course, you guys talked about that yesterday with your cooking demonstration. Um, I, got, I got a feeling we're gonna get a lot of thumbs up or hand waves on this, but how um, important do you think eating is to wellness? Thumbs up. Nutrition. How important is nutrition? Yeah. It's really good to eat food also, and it's also good for you. So it's, pr it's pretty much like a double bonus. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. David, how's that yeah. apple? Yeah, so I mean, can I ask a question? Absolutely. About nutrition. So, um, well, let me ask this question first. Who was getting the, the free school lunches and breakfast? While we're all, yeah. So do you think that's nutritious food? So maybe some tips on it. It's not like yesterday was like lunchables or something like that. And Monday was a disgusting looking melted cheese thing. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of sweet stuff in there with sugar, right? Even, oh. even like the carrots are covered in sugar. So yeah. um, do you have any tips and advice for us? Because nutrition is mm -hmm. really important particularly in these stressful and, and challenging times where we're yeah, right. self-isolating and things. 
Yeah. yeah. And some people right now, because they're feeling extra stress, they're going to more unhealthy foods um, because they're kind of stressed out. So they might like go for the bag of Doritos, which tastes really good. Uh, but they're not really good for you. So we kind of like those salty or sugary things, especially when we're feeling stressed because it's like happiness at that one moment, <laughs> but so, it's not helping you later. Right. In our okay. family, foods, that, foods and anytime foods. We have a bowl of fruit on our counter. That's anytime mm. foods like fruit and veggies. And then we have like dessert, chocolate, ice cream, packaged foods for sometimes foods. That is a great suggestion. I love that. Kudos to your parents for uh, coming up with that plan. And we've already seen a couple of uh, students on this video just munching on some apples, which is awesome. And you're gonna feel better because you chose the apple, which is really delicious. It's like I said before, it's crunchy, it's juicy. It's, um, it's really good for you. But in general, the closer your food item is to the earth or how it was naturally created, the better it is for you. So if you can get something from the garden, absolutely the best. If it's from your own garden, even better. All right, so you have to think about if you got uh, strawberries in December, that they're still healthy, but they came all the way from California. They were on a lot of trucks and they spent a lot of time on shelves before they even got into your mouth. So that's not as good as the strawberries that we can get right now in North Carolina because those are even closer to the earth or the ground that they came from. So Doritos, how far do you think that is from where it was in the ground? Do we grow oh. Doritos? <laughs> no, no. No. If, if they like were healthy, they would be better to eat. They do taste really good to a lot of people, do. but yeah. also natural sugar is better for you and also tastes almost as good as real sugar and real food. Like there's like real food in like preservatives and dyes and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So mm -hmm. yeah. And, and reading a label, this is another quick test you can do to see if something's like really healthy or not. But if you pick up a packaged food, which we do need packaged foods, we can't, um, in our society nowadays, we very few of us probably live completely out of our garden. Um, so if you're going to Trader Joe's or somewhere and you're picking up a packaged food or a box of mix for pancakes or something, if you look at the ingredients, if you can pronounce all the ingredients, you're probably in good shape. But if there's a lot of things on there that you don't even, you never even heard of that word or you wouldn't know how to spell it or say it, you probably want to avoid it. <laughs> probably not as good for you. It's normally because it's fake. It's just like not real food, it's just like some kind of thing made in a science lab or, and then they just put it to make it taste good or to make it look good or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So Kiebe, um, is Kiebe there? Yep, he's there. So, so how is, um, what type of things are, are you guys eating while we're, And Zeta has her hand up too, so okay. she might want to chime in as well. So it's a lot easier to tap pancakes and wheat pancakes and bacon. Oh, outstanding. <laughs> Very good. How, how about you, um, Zeta? It's a lot easier to stay away from unhealthy food when you're gluten free. I know sometimes gluten free. This like, if you don't Ooh. want to go full, like, since, like, one of your favorite foods has gluten in it, then you can go, like, mostly gluten-free. Like, my mom, she usually eats, like, gluten-free bread and all that, but she still tries to stay. She sometimes eats gluten -free. So, it's, it's a lot easier to stay away from. Yeah, so gluten free, Amy. Any any tips there with nutrition and? Yeah, um, my husband has gone gluten free on me, and it's killing me. 
really do that? Yeah, yeah. He he did. He tried it a couple years ago for a summer, and then he went away from it. And now he's going to try it again. So he's been doing it for a couple weeks, and I keep forgetting. So I keep making things. And I'm like, oh, you can't eat that because it's got gluten in it. And surprisingly, there's like, soy sauce has gluten in it. Like who would have thought? But um, it, it's it's challenging. But Zeta, you're right. It's also healthier. So. The other day we had spaghetti and I didn't have a box of gluten-free noodles and I, so I just used the box that I had, but then I was like, oh, hey, it's, you can't have spaghetti uh, with us. But I also had a big kale salad. So he's like, no, that's all right. I'll just use the kale. So he put the spaghetti sauce on top of a big bowl of kale and he's like, it was delicious. And it was really much healthier for him than us that were eating all the carbohydrates, which we do need carbohydrates. Um, we don't necessarily need gluten. So there's other sources. So we've been eating more potatoes and rice and quinoa and some healthier grains. We don't have to have gluten. And I do have to say that gluten nowadays, our wheat is not as healthy as it used to be. So I think that's the reason more people have trouble with it um, because a lot of uh, our wheat products in the U.S. are sprayed with chemicals um, or ultra processed. So again, if you could choose a homemade bread that was uh, locally made, be a little better for you than, um, you know, the box of mac and cheese. So. Um, Saida, yes, you have a, a oh. question? Um, well, another thing that's really good if you can't eat noodles is spaghetti squash. Oh, yes, that's delicious. So I'm thinking, Zeta, um, one of these cooking lessons, you could lead a, a gluten-free cooking lesson. That, that would be awesome. We'll add that to the list, no? Do I still have to do the comic book thing? Um, no, you don't have to do that. You could do the cooking instead. Anyway, we can talk later about this. <laughs> <laughs> now, is it... Uh, Cynthia and David had mentioned um, mac and cheese. So my kids love mac and cheese too. Can anybody come up with a way to make mac and cheese a little bit healthier? Because it is, can be good for you or it can be less good for you. There's any homegrown mac and cheese and it's like much more healthy than just the other kinds that you microwave that mm -hmm. don't stay in the like refrigerator once they're done or stuff. It's like, mm -hmm. they make it like, oh, so much easier. You can travel with it. But like, really, it's better if it, they're, it's like homegrown or something like that. Mm -hmm. Fresh. Make cauliflower mac and cheese. Ooh, that sounds good. Yeah, great suggestion because then we get rid of the gluten too that Zeta was mentioning. Um, and then you add a vegetable, which is gonna have a lot more nutrients. Um, and it tastes really good. Like cauliflower doesn't have a strong taste. So you can sneak that into a lot of things and you won't even notice. Um, what about, they sometimes tend when they get older, they just stop caring about their body as much and they start eating they don't eat fruits, they don't eat vegetables, they don't take very good care of their bodies anymore when they get old and don't want to anymore. She cut out a little bit, so I missed the beginning of that, Adeline. But. Oh, so like old people, sometimes they, they don't just choose the best options to eat once they get older, they stop really worrying about their body. Mm -hmm. And they just eat, like, they don't eat fruits, they don't eat vegetables, they just eat whatever they want, fast food, or, mm -hmm. like, not, like, good. For I, I think that a lot of that is just how much education we have. Like, we know so much more now about food than they knew, you know, 20 years ago, even, so... Um, or 30 years ago. So we can help other people make better decisions too. 
um, so they can learn and maybe they don't even realize that getting the cheeseburger isn't as healthy as some other options. So, all right, well, moving along, um, the next dimension is moving. And um, I love this one because I love to be active. I love to move a lot. Um, I like to play sports. I like to go for walks and runs. Can everybody just tell me, or you can write it, what your favorite way to move is? Dancing, might be outside. Mm -hmm. Dancing. Dancing? I, I didn't get that. I, I crashed for a minute. Oh, okay. I was just asking everybody's favorite way to move. Okay. Do we just put it in the chat or? You can do chat or just tell me. Skateboarding, gymnastics. Okay. Seabom, was that you? Uh, about what? Did you have a comment? Uh, yeah. I just Maybe? cut out for like, I, I crashed oh, okay. for about a minute. And I just, I, I didn't know what she asked. I was going to say, um, well, at the moment, you know, I'm riding bikes every day and, and just making sure you get out there for half an hour and just get some fresh air and get the blood pumping. And Is this supposed to work? You could write it or say it either way. I'm seeing lots of varieties and that might give some other people some ideas. Jogging. Jogging. Come on. So I've got, I'm just going to read down the chat, the chat list here. There's some great ideas. We've got ballet, um, which I know you can speak to uh, as well. Mm -hmm. Maybe uh, Jogging running so maybe we're going to have some future marathon runners here <laughs> yes love it what was your time with the new york marathon oh um i ran it like each mile which probably will make more sense to people is i was averaging like eight thirty minute miles right 26.2 miles that's i take my hat off uh, <laughs> they, how uh, long is a marathon 26.2 miles. That's a long lot. way. Yeah, a long way. Layla, you, you're up for the challenge. You could do this. Do what? Maybe YSA will have a, a marathon. Oh, I did like a 5K or whatever. Go ahead a 5K, but. Well, then let's do it. Let's have a 5K. Shall we do it? I, I can't run anymore. I'm out of shape. <laughs> In high school. We can, I'm going we can fix that. Hospital. We can, yes. I ran in Three fourth baby. grade. I did that in fourth grade. Um, um, the other thing here is uh, Joe loves skateboarding. He's that's, our, awesome. that's, a, that's a really good one. Mm -hmm. And jump rope, Zeta. Oh, so these are great. Good one. Whoops, a Daisy. What have I done? <laughs> I, I like saw some gymnastics. That's a great one. And uh, I saw one climbing trees. That's an awesome one. And I don't see many people climbing trees anymore, and I, I used to climb I trees do, as a kid. I do Taekwondo. Ooh, that's a good one, too. Oh that's great. I think Taekwondo is a good one. Oops, sorry, Zeta. I think Taekwondo is a good one, too, Amy, because of the, the discipline and the, the mm, mental, mental aspect of things. Yeah. Yes, Very absolutely, good. and balance. Yeah. And you can use weapons, <laughs> like nunchucks and bow stabs, Taekwondo weapons. Hopefully not on anybody else. <laughs> no, unless you really have to. Right. But I'm not allowed. <laughs> right. You know, climbing trees um, is really good for our upper body strength. And that's something where people tend to get weaker because we don't use our arms and our back muscles as much because we're sitting in chairs a lot. Uh, so uh, climbing trees is a great way to stretch out shoulders and back and get those muscles stronger too. Zeta? When I work my leg or my femur, I um, had to be in a wheelchair for two months. Ooh. So that helped me get a lot of movement with my arms since I had to wheel it all the time. Yes, right? Rock climbing is a great one, yeah. There are lots of great examples of moving. 
and we surely you know because we all talked about how physical wellness was super important to our overall wellness so you guys seem to really grasp the importance of moving and it's fun too but what happens um is when people get older they sort of slow down they don't want to move as much um and then it's harder uh like if you haven't run for a long time it's hard to get started running um so it's best if you just keep staying active throughout your whole life there's no reason that an old person can't go for a walk or a run um it's just that they have trained themselves to not be used to doing that so it's harder to get started but we can live physically active lives into our hundreds like and there are many examples of people that do live very active lives their entire life and they're healthier for it so um, you guys are an age where you're really active and i just hope and encourage you to keep that up make that a priority all right so um, feeling... i'm say one more thing too um, yeah, like sure. i'm looking at layla with the dog and this is another great opportunity to get active right oh, yes right take the dog for yes. a walk or well, not necessarily take the cat for a walk, but, or you could take the fish for a walk, right? Just pick up the fish bowl and just walk around the neighborhood. But I also, I have a park, like not even like a block away from my house. So like I could walk down there sometimes too and like play around. Oh yes. Very good one. Yeah. I don't know if you guys can see. I have two parks like right near me within walking distance, both of them. So one's really great for riding bikes. There's a big loop and it's really safe and there's a bunch of trees and then there's a soccer field and there's a small playground and then one there's a really big playground and also a walking loop and bathrooms. So we go to the parks a lot. Awesome. That's great. Yeah, lots of, lots of good places to play outside, especially in Wilmington. Did everyone see Dasha? He's not a good example of moving because he's just chilling right now. <laughs> he's very lazy. <laughs> but he's my running partner. So this afternoon, this afternoon we'll go for a walk. So, all right, so feeling is our emotions and an important thing to um, think about with your wellness is that you share your feelings if you're feeling a certain way that you can recognize, like maybe when you're feeling angry or you're feeling sad and that you can share that with somebody else and it's okay. There's all kinds of feelings, happy ones to sad ones to mad ones and they're, they're all important part of being you. So, um, Learning to be comfortable sharing your feelings and recognizing them is definitely a good thing. Thinking in our 12 dimensions is just about um, what you guys are doing. You're getting education, um, you're learning every day, and the, the power of that, again, goes throughout your lifetime. So we don't ever stop thinking or learning. We can keep on learning all the time. Playing and working, this one's kind of a, a little bit more of a struggle for adults because they tend to put a lot of time into working and they forget the importance of play. So you guys can help your parents to play more, right? So this is something that you probably know really well, the importance and the value of play and you can encourage them to play, right? Cause sometimes they won't make it a priority because they're like, oh, I gotta get to work. But sometimes just a 20 minute play break will make them work even better. So you can help them with that one. The next one in our 12 dimensions is communicating, and um, this one is so important for many reasons. Um, but learning to communicate, learning to work through challenges, if you have a brother or sister and you're kind of mad at them, learning how to communicate, how to say I'm sorry, um, and learning how to tell them how you're feeling, different things like that. So communicating is huge. And then the word intimacy, um, doesn't necessarily mean boyfriend, girlfriend kind of thing, but just friendships, like that you have close, intimate friendships in your life is really important to your wellness. So these aren't like your 3,000 Facebook friends or all your followers on Instagram, but your real friends, people that you can really talk to about anything. That's what intimacy means, that you did, can share. Layla, did you just hear what Coach Amy just said about 
So, uh, Layla is our social media guru. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Layla probably knows you probably have thousands of friends online on social media, but no, are those really? I don't even have that much friends um, on social media. I don't even have like a hundred followers on Instagram. Well, that's, I mean, more than one. I probably have five. <laughs> I mean, really, I mean, like, the only people or, like, the only people that follow me on Instagram are the people that I know from school. And that's then on smart. Snapchat, the only people that I have on Snapchat is the people that, like, I've met in real life and, like, I know. That's, that's smart. Yeah. I, I would tend to agree with the importance of that. But some people are just, like, out to get as many friends virtually yeah. as they can. But those aren't relationships. Those are just... They don't even know who they are. So trying to keep your relationships and your friendships really yeah. intimate and close to you and that you know them, care about them. We can't have thousands of those kind of friendships. Liking your, just liking your post basically doesn't make them your friend mm. because everyone can like what other people say. I mean, <laughs> but yeah. it's just like, if a stranger was talking to you, you wouldn't just say they're your friend and start calling them and playing with them. You would just know them from the one time and not even introduce mm, that's yourself. True. Basically. That's true. Would you even know them if you saw them on the street? Or, yeah, would they know your name? Mm -hmm. All right, so our last two dimensions in our, our big wheel here is finding meaning, transcending, and this is kind of like a Ooh, stuff that you, um, like it's, it's outside of you. It's the deepest part of the, the iceberg because it's really personal to you. Um, finding meaning is about your purpose. And um, at different times in our life, we might have different like intentions and in, in what we're setting out to do in our purpose. So your all's purpose right now as a, a kid is probably to be a good um, friend to others, to be a good student. Um, these are some ways you are finding meaning in your life. Um, but Dr. Rob and I might have a different finding meaning to each other and to, um, to somebody who's 12, for example. So that is very personal in terms of what your purpose is and what your intentions and kind of how you focus your day. Um, and then transcending is kind of like more than you, more than people we meet, but just a higher power and what your beliefs are. Um, so these are really core, deep values. They can't be measured by anyone else. It's very personal to you, um, but also very important to your wellness. So we don't wanna just ignore that part of us that it is, is also important. So um, the slide- Should we take Sorry? Should we take notes? No, because uh, Dr. Rob's gonna put all this on the website. So you'll be able to access it again. Uh, but you can always explore any of these areas um, a little closer and Dr. Rob. Um, Dr. Rob might have some activities. Adeline, do you have a question? All right, so um, in the slide right now, it has sleep in the center. And there's another one with nutrition, but we already spent a lot of time on nutrition. So let's talk about sleep. All right, so that's not one of the 12 dimensions that we mentioned, but I bet you would all agree that sleep is pretty important. So um, can we get some volunteers to discuss how sleep, either getting a good night's sleep or not sleeping, um, would affect any, you can pick any of the 12 dimensions, but how does that impact your wellness in that one dimension. Itzel, do you want to mention one? Yeah. Um, it can impact your um, mental wellness because you might be like a little more grumpy in the morning to other people or just to yourself. Mm -hmm. And that can kind of start your day off not so good. Yeah. So, so if you were feeling grumpy, it would probably change your communicating skills, right? If you're tired and grumpy. So communication would suffer, which is an aspect of wellness. Also thinking might suffer too. So along with that, if you're feeling grumpy and uh, then that might 
affect how you're thinking that morning. What are some other examples? Uh, if you didn't get a good night's sleep. Wellness, um, mm -hmm. You're not going to perform very well in anything if you don't sleep. Yeah. So moving, your movement would definitely be hampered. Yeah. If, yeah. And Seaborn, I can't remember, were you the one that likes skateboarding? That's Joe. Oh, okay. Okay. So what, what physical activity did you like? I just felt running, I think. Running. Okay. So if you were feeling tired, you'd be less motivated to go for a run. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm, for sure. And Amy, um, how much is enough sleep? It uh, depends on your age and it depends on um, so, sort of some personal preferences. In general, a healthy adult is seven to nine, but for your age group, guys, it's probably like 10 to 13 or nine to 12 hours to sleep because you're in a state where your body's, uh, I know somebody, I think it was Adeline and Isla had a baby in their house, but that baby sleeps a lot, right? Seriously so. sleeps a lot. <laughs> she had Why? Why? Why do you think she sleeps a lot? I don't know. She cries. <laughs> <laughs> she just sleeps and sleeps and sleeps and sleeps. Mm -hmm. Because she's growing. If you think about how much growing is going on in her body right now, it's the fastest rate of growth in her entire life is right now. Her brain is growing every day. Everything she's seeing with her eyes is brand new. So she needs sleep to kind of recover from all that and to also put a lot of energy into growing. So she's probably sleeping like seriously 20 out of 24 hours a day. Uh, it's a lot of sleep for a baby. As we get older, we don't need as much. So I personally like eight hours of sleep is really good for me. Um, so if I get less than seven, whoo, yeah, not so pleasant to be around. <laughs> Everything else in my 12 dimensions is affected. If I get less than seven, I can get away with seven, but less than seven, I really struggle. What other dimensions would be affected? By I sleep, sleep guys? like 12 hours, seriously. Good. <laughs> That's good. I would say um, thinking because like it can actually like mess up like your brain while you're like at school and then mm -hmm. like you probably like fall asleep during class for like staying up too late playing something or, yes. or something. Yes, that's very true. Yeah, it would affect your performance and just how we think and, and reaction time too. Um, if you had to do a task, like if you, not that you guys are driving nowadays, but if you were somebody who was behind a wheel and you're tired, your reaction time and making decisions is um, affected by lack of sleep. Uh, David and Cynthia was saying in the chat that it can affect your thinking and feeling if you have a test or a big event or more things important. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And how do you, can you, um, David and Cynthia, talk about how that might affect feeling? Because I think that's a good one. If we're feeling, if we're tired, what, what ways are feelings maybe impacted? Will we be cranky? <laughs> a little cranky? No, it's true. It's true. Anybody else want to mention how feeling might be impacted if you're sleepy? Um, um, it could also affect your immune system. Ooh, that's a good one to bring up right now, especially that's a, getting a good night's sleep is very important to our immune system. So that's a great example because we're learning about that right now. And I've also been hearing kind of lately that like the more you laugh, it can boost your, more, your immune system more. Yes, that's and very like I haven't true. heard that until like a week ago. Yeah, yes. There's actually something called laughter therapy, um, and that we need to laugh. So that one fits really well into the dimension of playing and working, um, and it also fits into feeling. So if we're laughing and we feel happier, then uh, it's a good thing. So, yeah. yeah happiness. Also, sleeping at the wrong times, it can mess up like your sleeping patterns. 
So like if you stay up yeah. until like maybe two o'clock, like you'll just like fall asleep during the day, but like wake up like late at night and like stay up until early morning. Yeah, that's true. Getting the, the sleep before midnight is actually really important for your body. So, and just we're made to sort of function with the sun. So if you think about like our nights are longer in the winter, sleeping a little bit longer in the winter is important trying to wake up around the time that the sun comes up is really good for us for many reasons. Um, so that could be another way to sort of set your sleep schedule. So if you stay up till 2 a.m. and you sleep till noon, you're missing out on that important uh, early day sun. Also, spending more time outside can help you with, like sometimes you just, when you don't get all that sleep you need, sometimes if you just sit outside in the sun or not in the sun, whatever you like outside, it's just good to go outside at least once a day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Lately, it's hard. it's hard for us sometimes because we're so into something. But we've been doing lately we have to but we still we find a way to enjoy it even some people don't want to go outside like me and my siblings sometimes but it's like it it once you're out there you just you sort of forget about how you didn't want to and you just find some way to make it fun yes making it fun very good All right, lots of good input from you guys. I love it. So, um, Amy, we're we're coming up. Actually, we're over an hour here. <laughs> this is this has been great. Okay. We might um, we might uh, wrap it up. If if sure. that, that's okay. Does anyone else before we do that? Does anyone have any questions that any remaining questions they would like to ask Coach Amy? No. No. Okay. Well, you can um, always ask me later. That's, that's right. Yes. Down. Yes. But yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, Seaborn, are you there? Yes. Yes. Do you want to? Could you say a few words? Mm -hmm. I'll I'll do it. What? Um. So. Wait, Amy, thank you, thank you so much for taking the time and, and talking to us today about wellness and health and all that type of stuff. I know that things are pretty chaotic at the moment, but uh, yes, we really appreciate all your insights and, and for joining us. So everyone can give a big round of applause. I love meeting everyone. Yeah, that was, that was awesome. Yes. And um, thank you all. If, if anyone has any like other questions, like whenever, um, I have Amy's contact details, and you can email me the question, and I'll I'll get an answer for you. Okay. All right. Be well, well everyone. Thanks again.